everyone welcome back to my channel um, I'm Nicola and this is not my usual podcast or um, recently I've done some vlogs but this is uh, hopefully something I'd like to be doing more of in the future which I'm going to be calling my crafty Sunday so it's just going to be me doing something a little bit different than I would normally do I'm normally um, known for knitting but different little projects that I plan to do and I thought it'd be nice to share them with you okay so what I'm going to be making today is something that I bought at the Knitting and Stitching Show at Alexandra Palace back in October, I think it was, October 2019. And it's a product from a company called Stoff and Still. And this is their latest catalogue. And I'm going to be using today a product of theirs called Pap Fab. And it's paper fabric. It comes on a roll. Like this you can see it's quite a long roll it's a meter wide this roll um, silver metallic and it's actually made I'm just going to look at the label it's actually made from they call it vegan leather and it's made from it doesn't actually say oh yes it does 100% cellulose which is latex coated and you can wash it in the machine as well so I'm intrigued just to see how it's going to work out now stuff and still as you can see i've got a website which is stuffsteel.com and i picked up this little catalogue at their stand at the knitting and stitching show and in here it gives you some ideas using the product and you can see all the colors that it comes in as well so i thought it'd be quite exciting to have a go and the item that i'm going to be making with this <coughs> excuse me is the um, Pap Fab Shopper. So it's like a big tote bag. And this pattern was downloaded free from their website. It gives you all the cutting instructions and some, they're quite um, limited instructions, but it, it looks like it'll be quite straightforward, but we'll see how I get on with the process. So I've got the roll of the actual um, Pap Fab, as I've already shown you. I've also got a pack of handles, which from the same stand, and these are just like a black sort of leather effect handle for the tote bag. I've also got a magnetic snap. Just a simple thing there. And they had these really cute little labels that you can put inside or outside. And there's two in the pack so you could have one in, one out or however you choose to do it. So those are my supplies. I've also bought some extra strong sewing machine thread. And I did invest in, just reach over for it, a Teflon foot for my sewing machine. Recently I've been doing some sewing on vinyl and it was a little bit tricky to say the least. So I thought I'd invest in one. I mean, when I say invest, this was like three or four pounds from Amazon. So it wasn't expensive, but it'd be interesting to see how I get on with this, with the sewing machine. If it makes sewing with things like the material I'm using today and the vinyl any easier. Now the first thing I need to do, um, it's in the instructions and also on the, the tube, it does say that you should pre-wash this um, fabric paper or paper fabric before you use it because it's easier to use damp. So I will get on and get it washed. I think I'm gonna pop it in the machine. It says you can wash it at 30 degrees. So I'm gonna pop it in the machine, probably with a towel or something like that. I think it will just give it a bit of cushion in. And also I don't think my machine will um, like just washing something as lightweight as this on its own so i'll come back to you later i'll get uh get this washed get it to a state of dampness so it's ready for sewing and cutting and i'll join you then so i'm just cutting the last piece a uh, couple of pieces of the fabric um paper fabric as per the cutting layout um which gives you here a really clear diagram of the best way to cut out to make sure you get all the pieces and I have to say it was much easier to work with than I thought it would be. I washed it at the 30 degrees as um, on the directions and it's now quite flexible. As you can see, it's, it's sort of flexible. It's got a little bit more of a crumpled sort of effect, which I quite like. And I'm just cutting it with a rotary cutter and my um, ruler here. So I'll just do these last few cuts.
okay so i've got all the pieces cut out now as per the pattern and the cutting layout so you can see the biggest pieces here it's gonna make quite a big tote bag i know it's difficult to see from this camera angle and it's still quite flexible um, I think it's going to be relatively easy to sew, but we'll see. A um, couple of pieces which I think for the sides of the bag, one for the base, and these are some other sections which we're going to find out as I sew it. So I'm going to get everything prepared now, um, get the sewing machine prepared, get the non-stick foot on and get it threaded with the right thread, and I'll join you back for the sewing. I've set my machine up and I've put on the non-stick foot here, which you can see this little white um, Teflon foot. I've also put in a needle that's specifically for sewing with leather because I think, you know, it's virtually a similar sort of material. And I've put in the extra strong thread. And I'm just having a little practice stitch on a couple of the scraps and sewing them together to see how the machine um, likes it. it's not actually um, come out too bad I'm quite pleased with the way that it's sewing the materials together and it went through fairly easy I don't know if that was because I had the Teflon foot on or because um, it would have done just as well with an ordinary foot on the machine but you can see it's seamed it together quite well I've gone with quite a slow speed um, there's a little bit of marking on the material where you can see it's gone throw but I think that's absolutely fine because it's got this sort of rough look to it anyway so I will um, gather together the actual main pieces of the bag and get sewing them together it does seem to be sewn together quite nicely which is good um, I haven't used any pins obviously because they would mark the material the once the holes are in it they don't close up like fabric would and even the little um, wonder clip things were leaving little tiny marks I tested it on a scrap piece so I'm just sewing by holding the pieces together but it does seem I think because it's damp and also the nature of the material it does seem quite happy to stay together while you're sewing it So I've sewn the um, reinforcement panels to the sides and main sections of the bag and the next part is to sew on the handles. Now I showed these at the beginning, these are from the same company, Stop and Steel. I'm just going to use the crinkling. I'm just going to get these out. Now this is the only part of the process that actually makes me a little bit nervous because they are quite thick um, at the end here. And if you can see they are actually quite thick and I'm not sure, not 100% convinced of how these are going to go through on the sewing machine um, and of course once you start sewing it's going to make marks actually in the in the handle and also in the back. Right, I'm just using some because obviously you can't mark this particular um, material this fabric paper so I've just measured out um, where the directions say so it gives you a little diagram to show you whereabouts you should place the handles just measured that out with my ruler and I've just put some washi tape so that I've got the positioning um, let's get that better yes yeah, so you can see sort of where the two handles will have to sit and how deep it's going to go but holding them in position and sewing them is going to be a little bit tricky so I'm um, fingers crossed that this is going to go okay right I had a little tiny practice um, with one of the handles. I don't know if, you, if you're going to be able to see this on the camera, um, where I just sewed a little tiny bit of stitching here. I hope that's picking it up. Um, the machine didn't particularly like it, but it did go through. I tried it um, against a little scrap piece and the holes aren't too bad. So I'm going to go for it. And now I've got the other, um, this handle all prepared. I've lined it up with my washi tape. So I got it in the right position and I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to try and sew across and then diagonally and around, sort of in a square and then with a diagonal so that it's really nice and sturdy. I'm going to sew it really slowly. I'm 
and carefully turn it around. This is quite tricky. But this so far has been the trickiest part. I don't know if you're still going to be able to see what I'm doing when I fold this over. Hopefully you can. Okay, I'm just going to straighten it up again. And then sew down. Okay. I'm just sewing the very last section of handle on and this has been really difficult. I do have a really strong leather needle in as I mentioned but you'll notice I've had to swap back to my original um, sewing machine foot which is doing really really well. This this little foot that I bought from Amazon, I don't know if the camera's picking it up or if you can see, the needle actually went through the plastic foot. There's a tiny hole and a little burr there, I don't know if you can see that, and it was then getting caught. So there's a lesson there. This is was a not a Janome um, Teflon foot. This was just a little Amazon cheapie. So I don't know if it would have been the same with the Janome one, but the needle was evidently stronger than the foot and it... Um, yeah, so that proved a little bit useless in the end. But this foot seems to be okay. The sewing machine does, because of the thickness, I think the sensors keep um, sensing that it is too thick. And because there's the thickness of the handle and also two layers of the paper fabric, and it keeps switching the machine off and I have to sort of switch it back on and you know turn it off, turn it on again and start again and just go really slowly. But if I can just get through this last three rows of stitching, then the handles will be on. Okay, well after much wrangling, I've now got two um, pieces of bag with the handles on and I took the opportunity to sew the label on the inside because I didn't want it on the outside. So the next job is to take these two pieces and insert the side pieces which I've got ready here. Just changing over the um, the foot on the sewing machine again. I was using this one that that comes sort of the standard foot that comes with my machine, but with the extra layers of the reinforcement panels sewing the sides in, the machine really wasn't liking it at all. And the stitching isn't as neat as I would have wanted. But there is no second chance with this fabric, so I'm just going to have to go with it. So Justin's just trying to um, get the little burry bit off the Teflon foot, and then we're going to try that again and see if I can get the other side panel in and get the base on. Hi, so I'm back from finishing the project, the paper fabric bag. As you can see, it's here. It's a couple of hours later, or quite about three, I would guess. And it's not been the most relaxing sewing experience I've ever had. Uh, obviously, I'm not sponsored by um, Stoff and Steel, who are the manufacturers of the products that I've been using today. I bought them all myself at the um, Knitting and Stitching Show last autumn. So these are all completely my opinions and, you know, completely unbiased. I would not make this project again. It was very, very frustrating, to say the least. I have used two leather needles. Um, my sewing machine kept, the sensors kept cutting out and switching the machine off, which made it really tricky to do. Um, the Teflon foot that I bought, although I did, as I said earlier, it wasn't um, an actual Janome branded foot. I think you can see, if I just hold it up with this piece of dark paper behind it, can you see the little tiny hole there that's where the needle actually went through the foot so the leather needle that I was using was actually stronger than the foot so I had to abandon using that that's going to end up um, in the bin and I will invest in a proper Janome one and I had to go back to using the other foot on the sewing machine which of course was gripping onto the um, the fabric now it did expressly say to use it damp I think to have tried to sew it as it was from straight from the roll would have been near on impossible um, because it was very hard and it wanted to keep curling up into the roll shape that it had been in before. It had a, a very strong memory. 
so using it damp was the only way to go and of course that meant that the as the thread was going through the sewing machine sorry about the glare on it as the thread was going through the sewing machine I think the thread was getting damp and it was causing the thread to break so it was it was a real trial to actually get this done so it is complete now I've got the handles on as you can see and from where I'm looking in the camera it actually doesn't look too bad so you can see we've got the handles on and inside is just a sort of a box shaped tote I put the label in as you can see here the little label that I bought from the same company um, but I think when you look up close the sewing machine and I don't know how clearly the camera will pick this up because obviously it's reflective the sewing machine was skipping the tension was all out and you can see where the feed dogs were gripping onto the fabric and they've made some marks too so it's as I said it's not something that I would um, attempt again I don't know if I would maybe it's in, in a different project it would be easier I mean this was especially by the time I was putting the base on the bag it was quite cumbersome getting it through the sewing machine because the handles were in the way and everything was all a bit of a wrestle so it would be fine to use as a, um, a bag for shopping or just to store some things in I certainly won't be making another one and if I'm honest I wouldn't recommend it um, I think the example that they had they had a sample on the stand at the um, knitting and stitching show and I think whoever had made that had, had lots and lots of experience of working with this particular product and maybe had a more sort of industrial strength sewing machine at the very least to cope with the layers and the handles and all those kind of things so I think all in all I'm glad I did it because it was an experience and it's nice to be able to share that experience because I couldn't find any other videos on YouTube um, of people using this actual product so if it's helpful to you um, then that's a good thing but I, all in all I wouldn't really recommend um, sewing with this particular product unless you like a real challenge so I hope you enjoyed joining me um, for this Sunday um, this crafty Sunday video I'm planning to do some more there's a few more things that I would like to do I've got some needle felting that I'd like to do um, and I need to mount the knitted deer that I did during my vlogmas so I hope you join me for some more crafty Sundays